Zack Snyder's Justice League. Is it good or just a pile of rancid, stinky ass diarrhea cockamamie dog dookie? Let's find out on today's angry episode. And also starring me, Dan Lukowski. Hi, I'm the angry movie critic with a gun. I'm a certified cinema expert with the gun to prove it. And on today's show, we'll be talking about the newest blockbuster to hit HBO Max, or as I like to call it, HBO Laxative. Zack Snyder's Justice League. But before we get into this, let's turn now to my co-host, Dan Nowakowski, who's gonna tell us all the latest celebrity gossip in a segment that we call Dan's Hollywood Corner. Dan? Thanks, critic. Hey, everyone, it's me. It's uh, Dan Nowakowski. W welcome to Dan's Corner, the only show that has me, Dan Nowakowski. I've loved movies since I was just a little guy. Now I'm a much bigger guy, and I would like to share that love with all of you. But before we get into the movies, let's talk about the folks that make them. Here's what's happening in the Hollywoods. First and foremost, who named it Hollywood? I went there one time, and there are way more than just one wood. I know that's kind of irrelevant, but I wish someone had told me that before I went. I probably would have found my way out of the forest a lot faster. Anyway, there's a lot that's been going on in the Hollywoods, especially in the last few weeks. Rush Limbaugh smoked too many cigarettes, Tommy Cruiser got really mad at some people, and we found out that Gina Carano was deeply insane all along. The Oscars narrowed down their picks for this year, and South by Southwest just announced its 2021 festival lineup. I took a trip to South by Southwest one time, and it was great, but if you ever go, don't bring a baseball bat. See, I found out a little too late that there were no pinatas there. And that made me a little sad because I realized that not all festivals will have its own pinata. Anyway, that's what's happening in the Hollywoods. Back to you, critic. Thank you, Dan. Now, as I said earlier in the show, Zack Snyder's Justice League is today's movie. Now, I would have gone into theaters to see this movie because my local AMC was actually going to show it, but after the Avengers Endgame premiere, I'm not allowed within 500 feet of any AMC property, so I had to watch a DVD screener copy that I borrowed from my friends at the local newspaper. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, let me tell you, when I popped in that screener disc, I was greeted with the biggest fattest steaming pile of goat urine I'd ever seen in my life. So I decided to watch it on HBO Lax instead. But when I put the movie on my TV, I noticed there were these stupid looking black bars on like the sides of the screens. And, and apparently they filmed this movie in European widescreen. What the frick ass backwards baloney is this? I'm not European. I don't care what size the TVs are in Bohemia, but here at 7602 West Kenmore Boulevard, Muncie, Indiana, 47307, our TVs are rectangular. I don't know what, what the studio executive poo-pooed that idea out of his anus because Zack Snyder is an all-American red-blooded man. He would never treat us with that European bull crap. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, why don't we have Dan give us a brief synopsis of the film. Zack Snyder's Justice League is a smash hit, and it has everything you could ever want in a superhero blockbuster. There's something for everyone. You got muscles, uh, magic spells, glowing red eyes, uh, symbolism, uh, a man's necktie, and uh, My Michael Keaton. With action and heroism like this, it's easy to see why Zack Snyder's Justice League has gained so much support. It's a really cool achievement, and a great way for fans to experience the story that Snyder always wanted to tell. Thank you, Dan. Now, as you can probably tell, this movie is full of plot holes. And he's got so many plot holes. The plot looks like a moldy block of, of, of Swiss cheese that's been sitting in the dumpster for a long time. Take, for instance, Superman. When Superman dies in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, he's wearing the blue shirt. But when he comes back to life in this movie, he's wearing the black suit instead? 
uh, X McChicken flipping excuse me? How did he get that? Is there a costume designer in heaven who made it for him? That plot hole is so big, my brother Dylan could walk through it. And Dylan's a big guy. Dylan couldn't fit on the Mystic Kimbers ride at King's Island. You know, I, I could go on and on about all the terrible, stupid, dookie plot holes in this movie, but let's move on to the one aspect of this movie that I know you're all here to talk about. While plot holes threaten to take the viewer out of the story that they're engaged with, it's important to remember that Snyder is effectively taking on a task comparable to that of the Russo brothers in Avengers Endgame. You see, it's no small task, after all, to combine the collective efforts of multiple franchises into a, a plot that's not only coherent, but also resembles the charm and wide impact of the comic books and graphic novels that it was based on. Yeah, yeah, thanks for interrupting my flow, Dan. I was kind of on a roll there. <clears throat> I was about to talk about the one thing that everyone came to this movie to see, the biggest portion of the film that Zack Snyder never got to make. That's right. I'm talking about the Joker. We finally get to see more of Jared Leto's Joker in this movie. And holy plastic surgery, Batman, look what they did to the guy. Why does he look so different than he looked in Suicide Squad? In that movie, he had, you know, these cool tattoos and he had the sexy slick hair. He was damaged. Now all his tattoos are gone. Where'd they go? Did he get laser tattoo removal surgery while in prison? This continuity is so bad, it's like those stupid SJWs over at Marvel Studios wrote it. Clearly another example of studio intervention. Zack Snyder respects the DC canon and continuity. Like Hamlet in Atticus Finch, the Joker is one of the greatest dramatic roles ever afforded to an actor. To play this role is a privilege, and any actor who fills these clown shoes is standing on the shoulders of the giants who came before him. So why the flip doesn't he have more screen time in this movie? I mean, what happened to those hours and hours of footage that he told us all about? If this was the real Snyder Cut, we'd have 20 times as much Joker in this piece of dookie. The real exclusive villain in this movie? None other than my childhood bully, Dark Sid. No, Dan, Dan, you mean Dark Side. That's the villain. Nope. That was definitely Dark Sid. Here's a screenshot from the movie. And here's a picture that I Xerox from my high school yearbook. S see the resemblance? No, I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about, Dan. But for me, the terrible Joker to Dark Side screen time ratio was the final nail in the coffin for this vomit cover abomination committed to celluloid, which was then converted to digital video and streamed to my Roku. After the Joker segment finished, I turned off the movie. I had seen everything I needed to see. In conclusion, Zack Snyder's Justice League is a jumbled mess of studio intervention, plot contrivances, and piss poor attempts at fan service. This movie was clearly rushed out by studio executives to please the hungry fans and beef up the content on their new streaming platform. I don't know, Critic. I think you're being a little harsh on this movie. I'm sure it has some flaws, and it might not be for everyone, but this is such a rare occurrence in the history of cinema. A director had to leave a project that continued under strict supervision from the higher-ups, but the fans still clamored to see his vision to completion. So he got to take another swing at the movie. And, you know, it might not be the prettiest piece of art, but it's the one we were meant to see all along. And to me, that's kind of beautiful. But Dan, I mean, that, that doesn't add up, Dan. I mean, this movie is just so buffalo poopy bad. There's no way Zack Snyder could have made it. To me, there's only one clear explanation for this piss stain on cinema. This is not the real Snyder Cut. This is a quick patch job done by Warner Brothers to silence the fans. But you know what? We won't be silenced. I know somewhere out there, Zack Snyder has been cutting away at the real Snyder Cut. Ever since the movie wrapped, he's been hunched over his 2015 MacBook Pro using Final Cut, and he's been splicing together every frame of his masterpiece by himself. But the studio bigwigs didn't believe in his masterful vision. So they gave us this version. Warner Brothers, I know you're listening, and I see through your lies. This movie is the work of a false prophet. We as DC fans and your paying customers demand that we see the real Snyder Cut. And I've actually brought on somebody who is personally victimized by the tyrants at Warner Brothers Studios. Please welcome to today's show, Jared Leto's Joker. Uh 
you know what, critic? I don't, I don't think I'm really cut out for this kind of character, you know? Just stick to the script, Joker, right? Yeah? We live in a society. Jared Leto's Joker, everybody. Now, Mr. Leto's Joker, you've gone on several talk shows before to talk about all the footage that got cut out of Suicide Squad in this movie. Could you tell us a little bit about all the cool stuff that you sent to your cast members, like dead rats and stuff, that didn't make it into the final cut of this film? Wow, uh, you're absolutely right. You, you can't ever have enough screen time. Dan. Uh... Screen. I, I had a screen Damn. <clears throat> on a suicide squad. Anyway, Mr. Leto's Joker, um, how do you think your character is going to play into the future of the DCEU, which is very definitely going to be continuing into the future? Wow, great question. I... Oh, uh, um... Uh... <clears throat> uh... You want to know how I got these scars? Uh, uh, you can't handle the truth. No, that's not. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, man, you guys. I'm, I'm having a really hard time keeping up. Is that because you're not the real Joker? Yeah, yeah. Are you are you a Warner Brothers studio executive who's come to keep me from saying secret information and bring me, the angry movie critic, with a gun to his knees? I am at least 65% sure that that was not scripted. Because you got another thing coming, buddy! <laughs> ah! Ah! No, dude, my head is off! You did it! Why did you shoot my head? I... I can't... Dan. Ah. Dan, no, it's not real. Dan, look, look, look here, I'm not gonna shoot you. It's not a real gun, alright? I, 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 I'm gonna add it in, in post. Like, it's fake, okay? Like, don't... Calm down, alright? Like, I'm...